Hello everyone and welcome back. This video will cover downloading and installing the STM32 Cube IDE and then creating and running a simple Blinky program. The easiest way to find the STM32 Cube IDE is to Google it. A link will pop up that will take you to the Cube IDE downloads page. For this tutorial and all future ones, I'll be using version 1.9. If you don't already have the software installed, Try to match this version to avoid any annoying function or API changes. Next, accept the license agreement and provide your name and email. Now wait patiently. In the past, I've waited anywhere from five minutes to an hour to receive the email with the download link. Once you get the email, start the download. When the download is complete, run the install application. There's not many options to go through, so just click through the application and make sure to install whatever USB drivers may pop up. These drivers are essential to allow the RPC to communicate with the ST-Link programmer. Finally, once the download is finished, we can launch the IDE. Within the IDE, select the STM32 project on the left. Now we must select the board we will be programming. Note, the first time you load the board selector, it might take several moments for the selector to sync with the online repository of all the different boards. As we'll be using the STM32 G4, we'll filter for it. First, I'll select Nucleo64 as the board type, and then STM32 G4 as the series. From there, I can choose which board I have and select the star next to it to add it to my favorites. Next, give your project a name and select Finish. Finally, make sure to initialize all peripherals in their default mode. This will save you time and potentially from some beginner headaches. Next, the software will download whatever packages are required for our board. After this is complete, we will be all ready to configure the hardware and start programming. Now that we have created the project and selected our board, we begin in the device configuration perspective. There are three main perspectives within the Cube IDE. The device configuration perspective, where, as the name implies, we can configure the hardware for our project. Then, we generate code and switch to the C, C++ perspective. This is where we write our code, build our project, and program the board. Finally, there is the debug perspective. This perspective opens when we start a debug session and allows us to set breakpoints, walk through our code, and read variable and register values in real time. Starting from the top with the system core tab, we can configure the DMA, the GPIO settings, enable watchdog timers, set our interrupt priorities, set the input clock sources, and finally select our debugger connection. Next, as the name implies, the analog tab gives us access to our analog peripherals. We can initialize the ADCs and DACs, set their sampling frequencies, and more. We can also initialize our comparators and our op amps. The Timers tab allows us to configure the timers, set their frequencies, duty cycles, and more. Timers may sound trivial, but they can lead to a lot of confusion, thus will be the topic of a later video. The Connectivity tab gives us access to SPI, I2C, CAN, UART, and more. Lastly, I'll mention the Computing tab. This is where we can enable our Cortic and our FMAC. Now, if we shift our attention to the top of the screen, we can open the clock configuration window. Here, we can manually specify the frequency of the processor, as well as set the clock value for our peripherals. This window may be a little overwhelming at first, so just know that you can directly set the clock frequency of a peripheral by typing your desired clock value within the blue box. The software will take care of the rest. Now, let's configure the hardware for our Blinky program. 
Regardless of whether or not you have initialized the peripherals in their default mode, the hardware should be ready to run a Blinky. The only basic requirement being that the pin connected to the onboard LED is enabled and set as a GPIO output. Since I am using the STM32G4, this pin is PA5 and is located on the bottom of the chip. If we look in the GPIO settings, we can see the way that this pin has been configured. The pin has been set to an output level of low, set as output push pull with no pull up or no pull down logic, and has a user label of LD2 green LED to help us define it. Finally, as I'll be using the debugger, I will go to the sys tab and make sure that debug is set to serial wire. Lastly, we won't need any other pins for this demo, but if you are working on a project and need more GPIO, you can simply left click on any of the pins shown on the chip and select input or output. From there, you can navigate over to the GPIO tab within the system core and configure the pins as desired. Now, we are ready to write our code. Navigate to the project tab at the top of the screen and select Generate Code. Select Yes and open the C, C++ perspective. The cube IDE will now take the hardware configuration we set and turn this into C code. The IDE will create several folders of drivers and other files necessary for the chip to operate. However, we will only focus our attention on the main.c file. 99% of the time, this will be the only file that we will write code in and make edits to. Fortunately, the cube IDE knows this and automatically opens this file for us. Note that the file resides under core src main.c. One of the first things you may notice within the file are all the blocks labeled user code begins and ends. These are inserted by the IDE as a way to keep track of and save your code should you have to reopen the hardware configuration perspective, make a change, and regenerate the code. So note that any code not placed within a user code block may be discarded if you edit the hardware configuration. As an example, say I place these two lines of code at the top of my main.c file. One of these is within a user code section, the other outside of it. Then I suddenly realize I need an extra GPIO pin for my project to work, so I change perspectives and add a pin. After I regenerate the code and switch back to the main.c file, I can see that the code outside of the user code section is gone. To blink our LED, we are going to make use of the HAL APIs. HAL stands for Hardware Abstraction Layer and is the set of low-level APIs that allow us to interface with the peripherals on our chip. Since we are blinking a GPIO pin, we will use the HAL GPIO APIs to write to the pin, and we will use the HAL Delay API to provide a delay. I'll leave a link to the user manual for the HAL APIs in the description of this video. Within the main.c file, navigate down to the while loop within the main function. There, within the user code block, enter the following. The first function toggle pin takes two parameters. The first parameter is the GPIO peripheral, and the second is the pin number. Our LED is connected to pin PA5, so the peripheral is A and the pin number is 5. Each time the toggle pin function is called, it changes high to low or low to high depending on the previous peripheral state. 
The second function, delay, takes one parameter, which is the delay of the processor in milliseconds. Now, we can plug in our board and click the green play button at the top of the screen. The IDE will build, connect to the ST-Link of the board, and program our chip. We can see in the bottom terminal that the download was successful. And now, if we look at our board, the LD2 LED is blinking. Lastly, I want to give an introduction to the debug capabilities of the STM32. Specifically, I'm going to show how we can analyze variables in real time, a skill that will be required for almost all future projects. To do this, I'm going to use three variables, A, B, and C. I'm going to place A and C as global variables within the user code PV block and initialize them to zero. I'm going to do the same with B, but within the main function. Now, within the while loop, I'm going to increment A and B and compute C as their sum. Now, before we switch to the debug perspective, let's first configure the debug settings. Navigate to Run, Debug Configurations, and select Debugger. Make sure the interface is set to Serial Wire Debug, or SWD, and at the bottom make sure Enable Live Expressions is checked. Select Debug and switch to the Debug Perspective. Within the New Perspective, navigate on the right to the Live Expressions tab and enter the variables A, B, and C. This will allow us to monitor their value in real time. Finally, at the top left, select the Resume button. This will tell the board to run the code. If we now look at our live expressions, we can see the values of A and C. Notably, we received the error failed to evaluate expression for the value of B. This is due to the fact that the debugger can only evaluate global variables. The variable B was initialized within the main function and thus cannot be evaluated. This brings us to the end of this Blinky demo. Stay tuned for future videos as we dive into the more complex peripherals.